Bwana asifiwe. Uh, my name is Paris uh, Njeri Wanambuko and uh, I'll be the one who share the word of the Lord today and I want to appreciate uh, that opportunity. I appreciate mom and bishop in absentia. Thank you to our pastors, Pastor Beatrice, Pastor Mwashigadi, the leaders of this church. Thank you so much for that privilege. Uh, I have mentioned my name. I am married to one person. Kindly stand up. <laughs> if I stay in your house. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate my husband. I appreciate him. Thank you. I also have a very able support system. They came to support me. I have my mom in the house and my sister. Thank you, mom. My sister, you can say hi. She's a last born, and I tangwa Teresa Carey, aka last born. And my cousin, I saw my cousin also somewhere. Wave. Ama amepotea. Oh, ndio ule uko nyuma. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. I'm also a mother, and I thank God for that gift. So today, I hope I'll be able to see the projections. So I want us to uh, study something very small on obedience. The media team, yes. So obedience, a key to threshing mountains. Tell your neighbor, obedience, obedience. a key to threshing mountains. And um, I want us to read from 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 22. If you're able to give me verses 22. And it says, but Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice. Tell your neighbor, to obey, to obey. Is, better is better than sacrifice. And to heed is better than the fat of rams. Verses 23, it says, For rebellion is like the sin of divination. Other versions say, but to disobey is like the sin of witchcraft. Nani hapa nataka kuwa associated na wachawi? Hi, say, tell your neighbor, it cannot be me. I cannot participate in that. And it says, an arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Right? So there was an instruction that had been given to Saul. But he decided he can be bright. And just as us as human beings, to And then, uh, then verses 24 said, Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I have violated the Lord's command and your instruction. I was afraid of the men, so I gave in. So just like Samuel, there are times we will do things. We know what the Lord expects of us, but we want to get the approval of men. So we end up sinning. So that is Saul. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 6 and verses 22. Aha, uh -huh. we all know that story. We all know that story. What is that? The ark. What did Noah build? An ark. And verses 22 says, Thus uh, Noah did according to all that the Lord had commanded him to do. Say, so that is my portion. That is my portion. So we want to ask ourselves, what is obedience? So we have seen a case where Saul disobeyed and there was a consequence. He did not become king. Noah obeyed and saved. Uh, we, we all know the story that there are those who are not destroyed by the floods. So we want to ask ourselves, what is obedience? I know for a number of us, Ephesians 6, verse? Verse? Children. Sit on your verse. Children, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Ebu ambia niba yako nione kama kuna watu wa wata ongea. Inasema nini nione. Kama uongei, tunaenda Sunday school saai. Tunaenda kurepeat. Ame kuambia kitu usha iskia? Ama ame quote another scripture. So what is Obedience. Because we have heard that from the time we were kids, and we are hearing it even today when we are grown-ups. So we ask ourselves, what is obedience? And we are saying, 
Obedience is a behavior that is respectful. A behavior that is respectful. A behavior that is respectful. A behavior that is respectful and mindful of the rules and laws in your environment. A behavior that is respectful and mindful of rules and laws in your environment. And there are so many rules and laws. We'll be looking at just three classifications. But do you know them? That's the first question we want to ask ourselves. Do you know what is expected of you from time to time? Obedience can also be defined as a trait and a willingness to obey. Right? So you have known what the rules are, what the laws are, then there must be that willingness to follow them. There must be that willingness to follow them. And so we are asking ourselves finally, do I know what is expected of me as a Christian? Do I know what is expected of me as a minister? Do I know what is expected of me as an employee? Do I know what is expected of me as a citizen? Right? So we'll be looking at the various areas that we are expected to obey. And so we'll look at four types of obedience briefly. In the next uh, 30 minutes, we'll be done. Types of obedience and what the Bible says about them. The first one is legal obedience. We will look at legal obedience. We will look at biblical obedience and examples in the Bible. We'll also look at situational obedience. My other life, I am a teacher, so don't worry. I will, I will be very systematic, but we'll finish on time. And then there is institutional obedience. So four areas of obedience. Legal obedience, what does the Lord expect of, of us as far as the law is concerned? We are Kenyans, we have a constitution. Tunaijua, ama tulisoma sikuingine mbio 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 mbio, yes, no, tukamaliza. What does the law expect of us? Biblical obedience, because the Bible is a guide, the situational obedience, and institutional obedience. So let's start with legal obedience. And then we'll read from uh, Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 to 6. And it says, Everyone must submit to the governing authority, for all authority comes from God, and those in position of authority have been placed there by God. There is a governing authority in our nation. I know we may have different political opinions, but the word of God tells us that the governing authority has been placed by who? By my vote or by your vote? Who has placed it there? And then it says, so anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against who? Against God who has institutioned and they will be what? They will enjoy a long life. Aha. Uh -huh. For those authorities do not strike for fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. So us in this congregation, tell your neighbor, I'll be fine to doing the right thing. I'll be found doing the right thing. So as a country, yes. So what we're saying, as a country, we have the governing authority. And it has been placed there by God. We have different authorities also and institutions that work with the government so that we have a better Kenya for ourselves every day. And so we'll just look at uh, what are some of those areas that we are supposed to comply to? What are some of those areas? You will evaluate yourself. You will ask yourself, how compliant am I to the various areas of the Constitution? One of the areas that we are expected as believers to comply to is 
One, traffic laws. See, ja, judge, mutu, don't judge yourself. Ask yourself if you are a driver. Traffic laws. Unazijua na unazifuatanga. Ama kwa sababu ujai shikwa, bas, umeobe. Just an example, business laws. We are in an era where we are doing business. We are getting economically empowered. We are working. And so if you are working, you are under the employment laws. You could also be a business person. Do you know the laws that govern your business? Have you been complying to them? It could be something as having something small as having a license for that particular business or a health certificate for that business. Right? Are you observing the laws as expected? Taxation laws. Nasijatumwana mtu, by the way. Sijatumwana mtu. Aliza ni bayako. Ume file return. Ama ata sasa yu return. Eh? Whether it is a nil return or an employment return, na kama uju uneza saidiwa. Sindio? Eh, na tusikuwa tuna complain kila sa tax. We have said the authorities instituted by, we can pray that they use our taxes for the betterment of our nation. Amen? Are we compliant with the tax laws? Let's read uh, Romans 13 verses 6. Uh, Romans chapter 13 verses 6. Did it say, pay your taxes? Ati do what? Akisisi atuwezi kwa onye tunaibianga serikali, sindio? Atuwezi kwa tumeka apa. Atuwezi, sindio? So as we pay our taxes, whether they are in big amounts or small amounts, tuna? Ebu, liza jirani yaku, unalipanga tax? Ah, yeah. Because it says, read what it says, pay your taxes... For these same reasons, for the government workers need to be paid in what they do. Again, I will tell your neighbor, pay your For these same reasons, for government workers need to be paid for they are serving God in whatever they Amen, amen. So your responsibility as a believer your responsibility as a believer, as far as legal obedience, is to submit to that authority. Are we submitted to the authority of the day when we are complaining against them? Our responsibility as we submit, we may have different opinions, yes. But one key thing is to pray that the Lord would give them wisdom even as they lead us. The other responsibility you have is to support in compliance. Si tumesema kuna laws nyingi hapo za kukomply. We've not even exhausted that list. Are you supporting in compliance? Care is very good. At least we have sijui tax compliance. Si tunajua kitu kama hiyo? Eh. Ebu jiangalie kama unaweza tax uko unaweza pata tax compliance. Support in compliance when the government advises us. To do one, two, three. Usikuwe wakwanza kukana. Sindio? Then serve God as a good steward wherever you are. Right? Ensure that you're following or adhering to what the government of the day expects of you. Then to the second type of obedience is what we are referring to as biblical obedience. Tell your neighbor biblical obedience Mm -hmm. uh, I request that Pastor Richard reads for us James chapter 1, James chapter 1, verses 22 to 25. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of a man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Thank you. Say amen. 
verses 22 says, but do not just listen to God's word. It is one thing to listen, but you must also do it. Otherwise, you are, I don't want that word that follows there is very strong. Otherwise, you are, you are only fooling you. Do you want to be a fool? You cannot afford to be a fool. So as we listen to God's word, I know we have platforms and opportunities to listen to God's word. Don't just listen. Practice it. Do it over and over again. Verses 23 says, For if you listen to the word and don't obey, when you are doing it, you are obeying God's word. It is like glancing at your face in a mirror and then you forget yourself. Is that possible? At you meshuka nyuele ni mejiangalia ivo ni kitoka kwa mira na jambia it is open. See that is out of order. So we should be able to obey and practice God's word. So as a believer you are expected to read and interact with God's word regularly. Tell your neighbor, as a believer, you are expected to read and interact with God's word regularly. So James gives us this advice. Listen to God's word in a day. We listen to a lot of things. We listen to music. We listen to people in the office. We listen to our children. There is so much. But do you spend time listening to God's word? You can listen to politicians. You know, you can listen to the news. There is so much that your ears are exposed to. But do you spend time listening to God's word? After you have listened to God's word, because we have said we will obey it, Enjoy the freedom that comes with God's word. There are promises that are there to be claimed. Claim them, right? There is advice on how to live. Live the word of God, right? So you will enjoy the freedom and also enjoy the blessings that are in that word. And finally, keep practicing it. As you are obeying, you're practicing the word of God right? Practice that word, the word of God at your workplace, in your family, as you relate with people. Let it be the guide for your life. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So areas of biblical obedience. So we are saying the word of God has guidelines for us on how to conduct ourselves in the following areas. Remember the word of God is very comprehensive. It is elaborate and it doesn't have gaps. So we will not read those scriptures, but we can just note them, that the word of God is able to guide us in our spiritual life. If you want to grow in the area of prayer, if you want to grow in the area of ministry, if you want to grow in your area of calling, it is all in God's word. If you interact with it, then you're able to learn and to know what you need to do from time to time. The word of God also has advice on how we can grow in our economic life. I'm sure all of us here have a desire that they will be lifted up financially, right? That they would grow in their economic status. It is still in the word of God. How to become a better person economically. It is in the word of God. Also, our emotional life, how we react to our own decisions, to our own self, how we react and relate to people. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12. Aha, uh -huh. it says, Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with, read with me, you must clothe, clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. We repeat again, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. So you want to ask yourself, which of those are you very good 
are you very good at? Or what area are you lacking? Because some of this help us to live a balanced, or to be a balanced emotional being. Another area that the word of God guides us is in our physical life. Uh-huh. Third John 1, 2, what does it say? Yes, we have said we're going to spend time with, with the word of God. We will be built and equipped emotionally. We'll also be built spiritually. But God also expects us that we'll be healthy in our bodies. Amen? Another area is in our social life, how we relate to people. Uh-huh. Let us read Colossians 3 verses 12. Since God chose you to be the holy people, again, just like the emotional life, you must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, uh, next, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, right? So those are just a few areas. You need to keep on, we said that we'll keep on reading the word of God. We'll be listening to it. I'm sure as you read and spend time with the word of God, those areas and many more listed, not listed there, will be addressed as you spend time with God. Amen? Uh -huh. Our third area of obedience is in what we, re uh, we refer to as situational obedience. Situational obedience. And we'll read the story of the healing of Naaman. That is the, from the book of 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 to 14. 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 to 14. And we see how Naaman obeyed and did he get help or not? Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of Vela, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying thus, and thus said the girl, who is from the land of Israel. Then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten church changes of clothing. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised, when this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman my servant to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened, when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive? that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. So it was when Elisha, the man of God, had the king of Israel, had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. The Naaman went in with, horses, with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times. Your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I say to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and Fa, Fapa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. 
And his servant came to him, near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, Wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Thank you. So we all know the story of Naaman. And uh, Naaman, first of all, there are three people that are very key that contributed to him getting his healing. One, we see that the idea of him going to the man of God was the idea of a slave girl. Yeah? Secondly, when he goes to see the prophet, does the prophet come out himself? What does he do? He sends a messenger. And we see him, I think it is in verse 12, where he gets angry, right? He's thinking, surely, this man of God, you're healed, you know, or something. Because he felt he's of a particular status. But did he obey? Verse, just go to verses 13. Did he obey? Yes, it says, verses 13, but his officers, this is the third participant. We have a messenger, we have a slave girl, but his officers tried to reason with him and said, if the prophet had told you to do something very uh, difficult, wouldn't you have done it? So you should certainly obey, right? So we'll find ourselves in situations, that's why I'm calling it situational obedience, where you'll be given advice that just, how, how would I like, Cindy? I resonate na wewe for who you are. You go to a government office and maybe you're being addressed. I have nothing against a soldier. A soldier maybe is just trying to tell you that the procedure in this place is one, two, three. Do we listen to them? Ama tunawapashanga maneno. Eh? We give them a piece of our minds. At times you walk to an office and maybe you are being attended to by a secretary. It is true you had an agreement or you had an appointment to the boss, right? But do you know that God can use those simple people around you to give you a breakthrough, right? The people that God places, they could be the high and mighty, but along the way, there will be people that God will place them there for a reason and for a purpose, right? So as we interact with people, right? Do not despise. And be cooperative. Be cooperative. Yes, be a cooperative. But eventually, Naman got healed. But we are told there is somewhere where he was angry. He was even angry kwa ile rivana. Tumwa, siju alikuwa ataka tumwe kwa river gani. You know, at times we want things to work in a particular way or there is an ideology in our mind. But this day we are learning and we are becoming better. That we will obey even that little person or that simple instruction that comes with a messenger. You know, we, I know we want to deal with those people, yes, in that particular class. But this day, what are we learning? In that situation, whoever it is that the Lord sends to help you, obey them. Amen. Right, so that kind of obedience, what it does in most of the time is that it, is that it tests our humility. I have that fruit. Sindio, you are humble, you are meek, you, you know you are that person. But once it gets tested, would you pass that test? So it teaches us that God can use anyone to give us our much desired breakthrough and victory. The trick is in verses 13. The NLT says, simply obey. Tell your neighbor, simply, simply obey. And to the last one, because after this one, I want us to rise up and pray, is on institutional obedience. The fourth and the last one is on institutional obedience. This is how we relate with our bosses. This is how we relate even with the people that we have employed in our houses, in our businesses. Aha, uh -huh. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 5 to 9. It says, slaves, 
obey your earthly we have obey your earthly masters we have obeyed god right because of biblical obedience now here we are being reminded obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear tell your neighbor with deep respect and so it is just not surface obedience it is deep it comes from within serve them sincerely as you would serve christ try to please them all the time not just when they are watching you as slaves of christ do the will uh do the will of god with all your heart verse 7 says work with enthusiasm as though you're working for the lord rather than for people we will find ourselves in different institutions the church is one such institution your place is of work is one such institution even the chamas that you join or social organizations that you join you join them voluntarily there will always be somebody giving lead or giving direction so the question i am asking here what kind of a follower are you when you let and turn through a leader akisema hivi kwa whatsapp you have a different idea boss akisema hivi you you have a different better idea what kind of a follower are you ask your neighbor what kind of a follower are you right so in our various institution the lord expects us that one we should serve diligently and sincerely serve diligently and sincerely whether you are at your place of work in your business you're interacting with your employees can your employees or the people you're working with see the god you profess in you then we also saying that an award awaits you you have served the lord the lord has seen how diligent or how submitted you are to your earthly authority there is a reward for you there is definitely a reward if you do good a good reward if you do bad there is also a punishment that awaits you and finally the lord expects us that we work with enthusiasm it should be from within that joy that gladness of serving your boss should be it should be come it should be coming from within you with joy not compulsion you're not serving your boss because there is a pay you know that the lord has placed you in that place with a reason and with a purpose amen, amen. so as we finish off we would look at what are the benefits of obedience what are the benefits of obedience benefit number 1 when we obey it is a source of joy we are glad and happy people because we have pleased the lord first we have pleased the masters you have that inner peace within you that you have done the right thing it feels good to accomplish a certain task you have been able to obey so there is joy and psalms 128 verses 1 says How joyful are those who fear the Lord all who follow his ways there is joy when we serve the Lord there is joy when we obey the instructions of the Lord number 2 it leads to prosperity it leads to prosperity how many of us in this place want to prosper all of us would right so where does that prosperity come from First of all it has to be ordained of God. Are we following his guidance in that which we do? It says you will enjoy the fruit of your labor, right? How joyful and prosperous uh you will be. So it leads to prosperity. Then number 3 long and satisfying life. Back to our Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1. But now here we we'll look at Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 to 2. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, if you do what? If you store, 
you will store them in your heart. You'll be able to exercise them. If you do this, you will live many years. How many years do you want to live? Jijibu. Hizo. Huh? And your life will be satisfying. Amen? Number four, answered prayers. We all desire that the Lord will answer the prayers that we're making to him from time to time. 1 John 3.22 says, And we will receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey him. So it is after, that we, after we have obeyed him that we get the answers to our prayers and do the things that please him. And finally, it shows our love to God. We all love God. All of us who are seated in this place, do we love God? Do we love God? So as, when you love somebody, you want to do something that pleases him. We love God. Are we able to do that which he has told us? Right? So as we wind up, I'll request that we stand just for a few minutes of prayer. We can pray that the Lord will help us to be obedient. So uh, prayer point number one, I want us to ask God to help us to identify the areas where we have been disobedient. You know yourself. It could not be even maybe in an area we have discussed today. But if it is well and good, where is it that you want the Lord to help you to become more obedient? Amen? That would be prayer point number one. You will repent for being disobedient. And secondly, you will ask him to help you to be obedient. Amen? Amen. Let's just pray for a minute. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the guidance that you have given us in your word from time to time. I pray that Jehovah God, that you will help me, dear Father God, to submit with gladness and joy, dear Father God, to the authorities, that dear Father God, that are around me, dear Lord, I pray that Jehovah God, could it be that dear Father God, that I have sinned, dear Father God, or not obeyed as expected, that you are going, dear Father God, to help me to be obedient in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help me, dear Father. I repent, dear Father God, of any sins of disobedience in whatever area of my life. And I'm asking the Lord in Jesus' name that you will help me, dear Father, to be more obedient. Work on my heart. Work on my mind, dear Father God, every day so that I will follow and hear that which you are teaching me in the name of Jesus Christ. The next prayer point, I want us to pray for our children, whether you have or you don't have, even if you don't have, you're praying for them by faith, that they will be obedient to their parents. Amen? So we are praying for our children, that they're obedient to their parents and the authorities over them. Whether they are in school, that they will be obedient to the authorities at their uh, school. Whether they are working, pray that they will be obedient to the authorities at their workplace. Amen? Pray for your children. Pray for the children of the the land of Kenya, that we will be able to have a generation that is teachable and that is obedient. Amen. Father, I thank you. I bless you, dear Father God in heaven, for the children that you have blessed me with. I pray, dear Father God, for actually an angel, the Lord of Jesus' name, that dear Father God in heaven, they are going to your master in heaven to be obedient in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We bless you, dear Father God, and we honor you. I pray that dear Father God, they will be obedient to children. And dear Father God, my children, dear Father God, even me as a child, that you will help me, dear Father God, to be obedient. Obedient, dear Father God, to my parents. Uh, help me to be obedient for a place of work. Help me to be obedient to the pastors and the authorities. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Oh, God, I thank you. Thank you that your Father God in heaven, that you're raising up, dear Father God. We want to call our children, dear Father God, out of drugs, out of alcoholism, out of, dear Father God, the drugs and substance abuse, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I bless you and I honor you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear God. Thank you, dear Lord. 
Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your teaching today on the subject of obedience. And dear Father God, I pray that you will help us to be aware and alert of what you expect from us from time to time. Fill us with the spirit of obedience. Help us to be obedient to the authorities that you have placed us under, even including, dear Father God, in this church, that we will be obedient to our leaders, to our pastors, dear Lord. In the marketplace, we will be obedient to the leaders and the authorities you have placed us in those places in the name of Jesus Christ. And we will continually reap and enjoy the fruits of obedience. We love you. We praise you and we honor you. For in Jesus' mighty name, do we pray and believe. Amen. Amen.